Thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you so much, everyone, for uh, being here with me. So uh, yeah, I am Juanita. And today, I'm going to be presenting my talk, Scientific Python from GitHub to TikTok. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am Juanita. I am a mathematician uh, from Colombia, from uh, Pontificia Universidad Javeriana. I am also a PhD student at uh, University of California in Santa Cruz. I currently live in the United States. And uh, I am a community manager for the Scientific Python project. And a fun fact about me is I am also a singer. I love to sing. And that's basically the thing that I like to do the most besides my job. Um, so what is Scientific Python? So first, I wanted to talk about what I'm not going to talk about in this talk. So I won't be talking about the scientific Python package, which is a collection of numerical algorithms we probably most know. And I'm not going to be talking about the scientific Python conference, which is held once a year. Uh, the US one version is in Austin. So I'm not going to be talking about these things. In this talk, I'm going to be talking about the scientific Python ecosystem, which is a Python package for scientific research and data analysis, the scientific Python community, which is basically the group of developers, maintainers, and users of tools in the ecosystem, and mainly the scientific Python project, which is what I have been working on for the past um, yeah, six months, almost a year, not sure. <laughs> and it aims to help coordinate the ecosystem and grow the community. Um, so basically, what is the scientific Python project? <laughs> So the first thing is um, it's an initiative to improve communication between projects in the ecosystem, basically get them talking to each other in order to plan strategies for the future uh, and make this future a reality. So I'm going to talk very quick about the specs, which is basically the first aim of the scientific Python project. But this is not what my talk is going to be focused on. I just wanted to talk a little bit about what this means. And this is just a mechanism through which the community can establish some cross project policies in which, um, I mean, they, they benefit more than one project. So this works similar to the, to the PEPs, to the NEPs, to the SKIPs, which is like basically, um, uh, yeah, some, some, some policies that they, they, they have in order to, to make the, the ecosystem better. So there are recommendations that are written by the community. And basically, the idea is that core projects in the ecosystem endorse uh, these policies in order to make them like official in, in, in this sense. However, as I said, this talk would not be focused on this, would be focused on the efforts that we have been doing to expand our, of community regarding community building and community outreach, which is what I have been doing as a community manager. So why? <laughs> I mean, I guess as developers, sometimes we are too focused on writing code and too little on community. So basically, I like to think that open source is about more than coding. It's about communicating, it's about teaching and collaborating in order to like build, build things together that are epic, right? Um, so the goal of the Scientific Python project in the end is to unify the community so the idea is to promote integration, diversity, and participation from a very broad community of people while also generating resources that help the contributors, the developers, and the users come together. So who, who is behind this? We are a community of volunteers from the scientific Python packages of the ecosystem. Uh, this is the team of the community managers. This project is led by uh, Jared Millman, Stefan van der Waal, and Melissa uh, Weber. And the rest of the people you see, see there are also community managers who are helping with all the initiatives in order to expand, grow, and unify the community. We have a group of core projects, which, has, which are, um, I mean, central projects in the scientific Python ecosystem, and are the ones that are endorsing these specs that I was talking about. And finally, we also have a steering committee, 
which is in charge of the spec decision process, uh, which means basically talking about what the specs do in it, they, like their own projects and at the end voting to see if like the spec is convenient for most of the projects. So how? How are we going to do this? How are we going to expand our community and unify it? So the first thing that I love, I love to talk about documentation. So in this case, we have a central web page, which is, I mean, it's, it's meant to be the central place for information for projects, developers, users to get everything they need from there, from the whole ecosystem. There's not going to be information about one single package, but like about the whole ecosystem and how it's composed. So uh, we are doing documentation in very different ways, which is something that I love. Um, and these are the three ways that I have been working on on documentation. So the first one is orientation for newcomers, interviews for community introductions, and demos from problems or for problem solving. And this is something that I wanted to show you um, how I've been doing it. The last thing I want to do before I start showing you this is um, a couple of months ago, I think years already ago, I wrote a blog post that was called documentation is not, is not just documentation. And for me, what it meant is writing documentation, it's hard <laughs> because you need to take into account what people want, what people need. And I feel like nowadays it's becoming harder because people learn in very different ways. So you're going to see that the ways that I've been trying to do documentation are very non-conventional. So first thing is orientation for newcomers. So in this uh, central web page, we want to have a bunch of information that can help people get started with the ecosystem. So why should you contribute? How can you contribute? How to start contributing and choosing a project? So these are like three main questions that people can encounter when they start um, being part of the scientific Python ecosystem. And what I have been trying to do is making some really nice videos uh, that I invite you everyone to see in order to, um, yeah, I guess, make newcomers more comfortable with the ecosystem and more familiar with all these questions that they need to uh, answer. So uh, from these three videos, I particularly like the, the second one, which is five ways to contribute to scientific Python without coding. And this video talks about all the possible things that you can do if you're not like 100% familiar with coding, because sometimes it takes GitHub and it takes to know how to use a terminal and it takes to know how to use a, an editor. And maybe you're not yet familiar with all of those things. So there's a bunch of things that you can do before like starting to contribute officially, like you would say, like there's a bunch of things that you can do to help a project and maintainers are always in need of help and they always need uh, people to contribute. So, um, yeah, this is my favorite video of the ones that I've been working now. Uh, so basically how it works is I try to write a script uh, in which, I mean, we try to introduce uh, everything that we want to, to say there. Stefan and Jared particularly and Melissa uh, take uh, reviews on these scripts and they help me like build them in order to get something like the the I'm going to say like the general message for the ecosystem, because as I said, this is not for a particular package. And then I just record them and I add animations and yeah. So we have a YouTube channel, which is something very uh, hard to maintain, but we're trying because it's, it's something really good for documentation nowadays. Learning through videos is a very nice way. There is a link here, uh, which I'm hoping to share this presentation. Hopefully at the end I can. So there's a link here in order to uh, for you to visit our YouTube channel and maybe take a look at these videos. So the thing, second thing is interviews for the community introductions. So uh, I have been meeting with uh, a bunch of people that are part of the scientific Python ecosystem uh trying to basically know them i mean some of them i i, did, I didn't even know before uh, and i want to introduce them to to the community so i want basically to uh i guess cut the gap between uh 
developers, users, and new contributors in order to, to yeah, to, to unify the community and make people understand that, yeah, we're not like strangers or anything. We are the community. You can reach out to us and like we're in GitHub and now we're in YouTube, uh, which is great. So these community introductions are basically very short interviews that I have been doing to some of the members of the community in order to, yeah, basically talk about them, talk about how they joined the open source community, how they started contributing, what was the hardest part of becoming a maintainer? And basically these questions that maybe we don't talk about a lot uh, when we're like focusing on writing code and making developments, but they are important, especially to encourage people to join the community. Most of these people keep telling me like, I didn't know anything when I started, like I had no idea what I was doing. And I feel like that's true for a lot of people. And I, I honestly think that that's an encouragement. That's like, oh, if they didn't know anything that I can start contributing to. So um, I also welcome you to watch these community introductions, which I think are great in order to start knowing the members of the community. I hope to keep doing more. Uh, I, I really want to get as much interviews as I can for, from people of the ecosystem. The next thing that I have been working on is the most for problem solving. So this is a hard one because I've been trying to sort of get some of the frequently asked questions from people uh, on the ecosystem. And one of the ones that I, I realized was like, that I, I mean, I struggle a lot. It's like, how do I set a remote for a fork? And that's like general. It's like, if you want to contribute, like do a PR and start writing code on any scientific Python package, you most likely are going to have to do this. Um, so I did it on TikTok. <laughs> Why on TikTok? I guess because uh, it is a one minute demo, I think. And it is something that I think many people can benefit from. And now there's like a very broad community of developers and programmers in uh, in TikTok. The hashtag Python programming has so many million <laughs> videos. And I think I want to start like making the community broader by, by including TikTok in our so you know in our documentation and I guess our social media. So um I guess these demos for, for problem solving are not going to be all of them in TikTok. I am hoping to do uh, more like YouTube videos uh, in, in, in our YouTube channel. And all of these, again, is going to be um, comprised in our web page, which is, which is a central place. But the idea is for us to, to make um, information in more channels available in order to make the community broader. So the second way that we want to unify the community and uh, yeah, grow our ecosystem is through a blog. So we have a scientific Python blog, and this is a place to share thoughts and ideas. Basically, um, this is a place where I think users can also learn about the ecosystem because it's going to be written by maintainers, developers, even users if they want to. We, we don't really have like, um, any blockage on, on the things that you can write in this blog. I mean, as long as it's sort of related to the scientific Python ecosystem, but basically it's a place for us to build knowledge together. And it allows integration between several packages because I mean, any maintainer from any package in the scientific Python ecosystem can write a blog post. And I mean, our idea here is to have a central place for people to share their thoughts on the ecosystem. So I think this is a great place to share different perspectives and I guess, build uh, uh, another kind of knowledge together. Also, the link of the blog post is right there. And the third way, which I'm going to be really honest, and I have no idea what I'm doing with these most of the time. So it's social media. <laughs> so we are using social media for outreach and engagement. And I guess my idea with this is to have uh, direct interaction with users and developers. I, I like to think that when you make a post on Twitter, then you get people like users from the packages, developers from the packages, con yeah, contributors, uh, all, all the kinds of people from the ecosystem are there and they can reply to you. They can like your posts. They can like 
get direct communication from you on social media, which I think it's great. This is also made to call people's attention. So I remember one of the, the, the tweets that had the most likes was, was the announcement for a workshop that we made about uh, alt text. And I think that's great because we are, um, I guess, broadening the channel of inviting people to workshops. I mean, we, we started the Twitter with like, I don't know, one follower. And then now we have uh, 3,600 followers almost, which I think it's, it's great. Um, we still have a long way to go, but, but uh, I feel like Twitter and other social media, as you're going to see, are great channels of communication in order to get direct content from people that are there to break barriers between developers, users, and contributors. Um, okay, so this is how our YouTube channel is looking like right now. We don't have many subscribers. I hope after this talk we have more, <laughs> if you like the content, of course. Um, I guess my idea is not to have a billion subscribers. My idea is to have people that can watch the content that is relevant for them and that we actually have people that care about the things that we are doing, not to have like a billion followers. That's not my idea. My idea is to create content that helps a bunch of people. And if the content is helpful, then I'm, I'm very happy to see that you're watching our videos. So Instagram is something that I've been trying to. And this is where I'm, start, I'm gonna start saying, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I do use Instagram, but uh, I think people are using Instagram a lot for coding stuff, which is amazing. They, they do tutorials. There's something that's called reels, which is like longer videos. And they do reels about coding and somehow they fit the terminal in this like very small screen. And I'm like, how are they doing this? And I'm trying to learn. Um, so right now in the Instagram, I'm, I'm trying to, to get like the, the, the pictures of the people that I've been interviewing, which I think it's like a nice call to check our YouTube channel uh, for the interviews. And I'm also trying to upload some reels with some of the relevant questions of the interviews, not the whole interview, but sometimes Instagram, it's for like short, shorter content, you know, like you're on Instagram, you probably don't want to watch a uh, 17 minute video. So better, maybe a three minute video with one of the questions for the interview. I think that's what works. But again, everything that I've been doing, especially with social media is just trying things and hoping that they help someone. Cause you know, right now we have, I mean, it increased since the past like days that I've been writing, that I wrote the presentation. So now we have like 99 or 100 followers, which is not a lot, but if, that hundred people that are watching the content that I am doing there, it's like happy and it's useful. I guess that's okay. This is one of the posts that I made on Instagram. And I think it's one of my favorites. It basically has the information of one of the videos that I was talking about, which is the five ways to contribute to scientific Python without coding. And I think it's it's a different way to present the information. So Instagram is a lot about color and emojis. And I mean, at least that's what I've seen and I think so. So I am not a designer. <laughs> I have no idea about color or fonts or anything. So this took me a while. I tried a lot and uh, I'm trying to 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 create this like beautiful posts that call to action attention to people, but also they teach something. And I think if you read these, then maybe you're going to want to start to contribute to scientific Python and to open source projects, um, because this is going to show you how to do it without actually coding. And you didn't have to watch a video if you don't want videos. And you didn't have to read documentation in, I don't know, the scientific Python web page. You just needed to scroll through a social media post, which was pretty. So I guess this is another way that I'm trying to to help and call people's attention. This is another one that I made. Uh, and this is like, uh, I guess also useful in order to show people how they can start helping. So this talks about, um, usually when you start contributing to a project, you can look for the good first issue talk in the issue tracker. And sometimes that's gonna be a good example of what you can do 
if you're not very familiar with the project or, or the code. And finally, and this is honestly the hardest one, it's TikTok. So before joining the Scientific Python project, I had no idea how to use TikTok. I don't, I mean, I didn't have a TikTok of my own. I opened a TikTok just to understand how it works. And I have two videos of my cat on my TikTok. And I think that I've been trying to learn. It's really hard because it's very different from every social media that I have. Um, but I've, I've really seen a lot of nice videos and cool videos about coding. Um, fun fact, GitHub has a TikTok page and I think it's amazing. They have a lot of very useful information uh, and they have a bunch of users. So I'm thinking, I mean, people must like that stuff in TikTok. So I guess um, a lot of generations, the coming generations most likely are going to be using TikTok a lot. So if I can find a way to produce useful content on TikTok in order to grow the community and I guess help um, people who want to join it and yeah, enjoy the ecosystem, then I'm happy to, to try to do so. Even though half of the time I really feel clueless, I, I remember the first video that I tried to do, I didn't know how to put the music and then there's a bunch of filters and then you have to put the, the the, the screen, the start screen, but then you have to like use the TikTok editor to do all these things. And it's like a bit crazy if you have no idea how to use it, but we're getting there. So um, yeah, I'm happy to try new things. So I wanted to show you a one minute video that I made. Uh, this was like a recap from the interviews that I have been working on and I upload this to TikTok and to the Instagram Reels. I also post it on Twitter. Maybe some of you already saw it, but I think this is the kind of content that we can write that can be educational, inspirational, and it can help uh, us grow and unify the community and make people want to be here. So I'm gonna press play. I hope, I think my audio is shared, so it should be okay. The best piece of advice that I could give is that you should definitely start by following your interests. If you want to do a first PR, a great way to do that is to look through documentation. There's almost always something there that could be improved. Just just read, read code. <laughs> so find something that is fun to do with this code. Find something that really starts, you know, starts joy. <laughs> you have maybe more choices than you even know. I think it's also important to find uh, ways of communicating with people from the projects. People will, will help you get started, you know, so you can hit us up. I would say be patient. Don't be afraid. You'll always kind of feel like you don't know what you're doing and you probably know more than you think you do or, you know, maybe it doesn't matter, right? It's learning and any and all help is appreciated from the maintainer. So like, don't, don't count yourself out before you get started. Okay, <laughs> so I really had a lot of fun uh, making this video. I think listening from advice uh, from people that have been that have been doing this for years is it's really nice um, because uh, it's all like this. Come here, try it. I we want to help. Like there's no need to be scared. Like I I feel like these kind of things can really help us grow our community and I guess encourage more people to to join us. Um, the last question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so the last question that I want to answer after knowing what, uh, who, why, and how is where. So I guess this is all the places that you can find us. The first one is the Scientific Python uh, website, which I showed you a screenshot of, but uh, hopefully you can go visit it. It's not ready yet. Um, it actually doesn't even have a uh, some of the videos yet. We're still building it, but um, I mean, we're getting there. And I hope that uh, at some point it's going to be like a very useful place for a lot of the projects. This is also where the specs that I was talking about uh, are going to be. And this is also where the blog post 
uh, is going to be linked. Well, it is already linked. Um, but this is where you're going to find basically everything. There is also a link on the website, but I'm putting it there, of the discuss of scientificpython.org, which is a place where we have discussions about stuff and anyone is welcome to join. So I'm putting the QR code there if you want to scan it with your phone and start um, joining, then yeah, that's, that's a nice place to start if you want to join us. And these are the, yeah, the social media, I guess, handles, if that's the name. Um, in case you want to check out the content uh, that we have been doing, everything is also on our GitHub. Um, and I guess that my invitation is to join us in however way you want to join us. If you just want to follow our Twitter and like, I don't, be, I don't know, be updated of what we have been doing, then that's a nice uh, thing to do. If you want to follow our YouTube channel and watch the video of how can I start contributing and then start contributing, then I guess that's also great. And finally, uh, I wanted to explain a bit why I chose the name of the talk. So the, the talk, uh, the talk's name is from GitHub to TikTok. And I guess my idea with, um, with this talk is to try to explain that, um, in the scientific Python ecosystem and community, um, we need to try to understand the needs of users and developers. And this means to start considering the preferences and behaviors of our audience. So if we think that our audience, like very soon is gonna start being, I don't know, um, college students, even high school students, then we need to think that we're gonna have to get to TikTok at some point. Um, and I feel like these, uh, even if it, it's like very hard and even if a lot of people who are currently contributing and currently part of the projects um, do not use TikTok or Instagram, uh, I feel like expanding the channels of communication is very good in order to reach more people. So if first we could reach people through Twitter and through GitHub, then having uh, now Instagram and TikTok and also Facebook on YouTube, it's uh, a way to make the information more available to people and finding ways to to be em empathic, to 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 feel their needs and to understand what they want to see. Because sometimes they they really it's not good to read documentation. Some people just don't like it, and then I guess social media is a way, a more enjoyable way for some for some people. So my idea. Uh, with this project has been a lot uh, in integrating social media as part uh, of the project because it's a very big part of people's lives. And I, I put a GIF of a loading screen. And for me, the meaning of that is we're walking towards expanding our communication. We're, we're walking towards making content on TikTok that is relevant. We're walking towards um, producing things that can help people in other social media channels, but we're not there yet. Uh, this is a uh, very hard work that we have been doing for these past months. And today, I guess my idea was to, to try to show you, um, our advances and yeah, maybe leave you with, uh, some message of, I guess, joining us, please join us in any way that you want to join us. There's a lot of ways that you can uh, join the community and the Scientific Python project is meant to grow and unify the ecosystem. Uh, and I think that was it for today. I wrote there my GitHub handle, my Twitter handle and my email if you wanna reach out to me. If you saw something that was interesting and you wanna talk about it, or if you just want to reach out to me and be like, hey, I didn't understand anything or I want to know more or I don't know, send me the links again for the, the social media handles. I'm happy to reply. So please contact me and thank you so much for, for being here and talking about community because I think that's something that we need to talk more about.